Good morning. What is up? It is first take. United Nations edition right now. Is wow. On the table. Whoa. That's funny. Not right? even five totally... seconds I in. think it's funny. United it's funny. Colors of Benetton. Anyhow, Carrie Don't Chow. Don't help him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Chow alongside Anita Marks, Om Young Masuk, and Freddie Coleman. Freddie, last time I saw you on the show, you had Ohm's hair. I did. <laughs> a, a while a ago. It's been a minute. It's been, it's been that long since we've seen each other. I, wow. He's off and running today. Boy, it's I'm a holiday sure. weekend it's already, gonna, isn't it? It is a holiday weekend. I've already checked out. Much like the <laughs> NBA when, you come, when it comes to free agency right now, people are spending money. Let's get right into it. Uh, NBA free agency, as mentioned, officially underway. The Lakers have reached a verbal agreement with Timothy Mozgov on a four-year $64 million deal. Yes, Timothy Mozgov. This deal first reported by The Vertical and confirmed by our own Brian Windhorse. I have to say it one more time. Tim <laughs> Timothy Mozgov. Mm -hmm. That type of money mm -hmm. with the Lakers. What does this say about the Lakers, Freddie? Well, they're desperate for anybody because they knew that quality free agents were not even thinking of even going to the Los Angeles Lakers. And I used this earlier this week when I was on first take. The Lakers and the Knicks are the team. Well, why not us? Why would people not want to sign here? Well, apparently the Lakers knew that because the first call they made at 9.01 Pacific time was, hey, Timofey, if you're not doing anything for the next four years, you want to come play for us even though last year you didn't get any burn the Cleveland Cavaliers. You, you played 17 minutes per game with Cleveland. They changed everything. You had to sit on the bench. You got the championship ring and the championship belt. It's gotten to that point that if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, a storied franchise in the NBA, that your attraction is not what you think it used to be or what you think it should be because free agents like, I can go to L.A. anytime. I'm not going to play for that organization. I'm not going to do anything until I believe they can win and then I'll think about it. So until that changes, and that puts a lot of pressure on Luke Walton now because they brought him in. He said the Lakers' job was his dream job. He's going to have to overcome the sins of Jim Buss, who has clearly shown that his player evaluation scale is definitely at zero when it comes to helping the Lakers being a championship team or a contender again. So that's what this is. They felt that Timothy Mozgov was the best option, a guy that didn't get any burn off the bench, a guy who had nine DMPs in the NBA playoffs. The Lakers are hoping that, man, if we can get it going a little bit, maybe Russell Westbrook will think about us. Maybe Kevin Durant will sign a one-year deal. It could be a combo package where they'll both come here. But as long as the Lakers are being run this way, and they think Timothy Mozgov is the answer to their ills, they're going to continue to spin their wheels and not be the kind of team that we're used to seeing. It's a desperate move, but it was the only move for the Lakers because nobody that's a quality free agent was thinking about them. You know, they, they fill an immediate need. I get that. I, I still question with that young nucleus and, and how they're going to play offensively. Does he fit that role with them? It's going to feel a little strange. But what I find interesting is the big name free agents, right, that everybody wants to go after, like the Kevin Durant's. LeBron James has changed the landscape of the NBA. Right, it's win now, and it's kind of gaming the system where you're, you're you're putting together these big three, and it doesn't exist in Los Angeles. So, with all due respect to the Bus family, and I love Jeannie Bus, you know the mentality there, especially free agents looking around the NBA, is that's a place you want to go because they have a, a young nucleus, nu nucleus, nu nucleus, nucleus. There you go, <laughs> yeah. and 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 they're going to be good a few years from now. I think they might be great a few. So that's an investment for you to go there in long term. They're not going to win right now, but. You know, the, the way that, that the NBA rolls right now, and especially Kevin Durant, we heard what he said, right? He wants to win right now. And that's not what's going to happen in Los Angeles. For the love of Magic and Kareem, <laughs> what is going on in Hollywood? The Lakers can't get anybody anymore. They couldn't get LaMarcus Aldridge last year. Couldn't even get a meeting with people. DeMar now. DeRozan, who grew up basically a Laker fan, idolized Kobe. And DeMar DeRozan comes out and says, well, you know what? I looked at the Lakers, and I, I said it to the Toronto Star, I believe, Bruce Arthur, and said, you know what? Unless I'm going to win seven championships, how do I overcome the legacy of the guy who was there for the last 20 years? So now it's like star players are looking at the Lakers like that, like we can't live up to the standards of the Lakers, so we're just not going to go there. And at 12.01 a.m., you call Timothy Mozgov? <laughs> First of all, I don't even understand, like, Luke Walton. I figured he was going to, you know, maybe duplicate Golden State. So maybe he's looking at Mozgov as he could be our Andrew Bogut. But, I mean, <laughs> I, all of a sudden, like, our, our boy Kevin Nagandi tweeted out, what, 15 minutes? He scored 15 points the entire playoffs or something like that. Right. And he gets $16 million a year. I know this is a new NBA, but to me, if I am a Laker fan, I am very depressed this morning because I'm like, the first guy you went out to get was Timothy Mozgov. 
and you threw all this money in it, which may end up being a bargain in this new NBA. But still, go after and get somebody else. I'll tell you what, Dwight Howard's got to be sitting somewhere going, what? <laughs> he got how much? I don't want to hear anything from anybody if I go in and say I'm getting 23, 24 million because he's going to say, if Timothy Moskov, who's going to make more money this year, four million more than Steph Curry, he's going to make 16 million this year, and Steph Curry's going to make 12 million from Golden State. I understand money, and I'm not hating on Timothy Mozgov. If someone's going to be that foolish to give me that kind of money, you should be smart I mean, enough to take it. But at the same time, how much is it if you're a Lakers fan? Well, you, you can't even try to convince me that, oh, Freddie, this is going to be a great signing. This guy was great in Denver. <laughs> Key word there is was, were. Uh, you're paying for a were if you're the Los Angeles Lakers. That would have never happened when Jerry West was in charge of this franchise, when Pat Riley was a part of this franchise, even when Phil Jackson was a part of this franchise. They paid for production. They paid for potential. Not we're hoping or were and we're thinking this can make it work. That's where they are right now. And until that mentality changes, it's going to be the same old same with the Lakers and they're not going to do anything. I think this shows how far rebuild the Lakers have to go. And I think it's now has to set basically the expectations for Laker fans that, listen, the Phil era is way gone. The Kobe era now is officially over and they're moving on. And Timothy Moskov is the first guy they signed. But you're going to have to be patient with Luke Walton. You're going to have to see who else they can get. But it's not going to be Golden State Warriors right away in Los Angeles. To me, it's like the Lakers are this big Hollywood movie. They want to get Tom Hanks. They're like, you know what? We can't get Tom Hanks. Get me Pauly Shore. Like, right? <laughs> wow. Like, come That's on. Come on. It's, it's, it's a drastic difference. But with Jerry, like under Jim Buss, are they going to be able to turn it around under Jim Buss's watch? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I have faith in Jeannie. I think Jeannie knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And um, Jeannie, we trust. Yeah, I, I, I and, and listen, who knows what happens a year from now? Does Phil Jackson leave New York, go back to Los Angeles, and and that might not be really a comfort to Lakers fans. He's not to see drawing. What Phil is doing oh, in New York. I was just okay? going to say he's not but, drawing big name free agents in New York but either. But at least at least Phil has that you know chemistry, and he obviously has a relationship with Jeannie, where I think they could work together well. I'm not quite sure Phil and Dolan are working together yeah. well. So maybe they could make it work in Los Angeles, but I do think things could change maybe. A year or two from now. To, to use your movie reference, they're Independence Day resurgence, the Lakers. That's what <laughs> that, they are. Yeah, that Seriously. Movie was yeah. great. And I, th thank you very much. Special effects good, so, yeah. acting horror. When Will Smith looks at a blockbuster and he says, you know, I could use the job, but I don't want that job, that's where the Lakers are. They're trying to think of past glories and thinking that's going to represent their future when the present is a dire situation for this team right now. Well, it's also Independence Day because Los Angeles is just getting blown up probably too as well. Still love for Southern California. Still love for Southern California. How long, I like to throw out these hypotheticals, but how long before the Lakers can probably turn it back around when p free agents want to return to L.A.? I mean, it's Los Angeles. I, it's I, I, think, I think minimum three years. I think minimum three years until and, – and because we, I, I know we're going we're gonna to start talking about the Knicks as well and, and, and the idea that Joakim Noah is going to come there, the reports are, that he's made an agreement. And, and so you, you look at that team and say, okay, how good can that team be – it's one thing to get to the playoffs. It's, it's, it's another thing to get to the second round of the playoffs. But is that okay? For the Lakers and, yeah. and, the, Knick, and, and, and the Knicks, is that okay? No. I mean, for that fan base and that history and that nostalgia and, and, and what, what that fan base expects from those organizations, is just making it to the playoffs okay? I don't think it no. is for Laker no. fans. And I absolutely, I host Sports Talk Radio in New York. I absolutely know it's not okay for, for, this, for Knicks This fans. is what I said on Freddie's show last night. The Lakers and the Knicks have become the exact same franchise. They really have. Basically, the Knicks are always saying, oh, who wouldn't want to come for Mad play at Madison Square Garden, the Mecca? Who would doesn't want to play in New York. Nobody, okay? And the Lakers, well, we got Hollywood, Showtime, you know, all the glitz and glamour. Nobody wants to play there anymore. They could not get DeMar DeRozan to even think about it. DeMar DeRozan grew up there. If you Straight can't, get, if you can't yeah. get a guy of DeMar DeRozan's ilk, and look, DeMar DeRozan's a good player, okay? I don't think he's an elite, elite player, right? But you can't even get DeMar DeRozan to consider it because he's saying, well, unless I win seven championships there, I can't follow the guy that's been there for the last 20 years. What are you going to get? So now you have to wait and see if D'Angelo Russell, is he going to mature? You know, Randall, is he going to look good? What can Luke Walton do? But that may take a while before somebody can see those building blocks. Yeah, they're not totally devoid of pieces. I like the signing of Jordan Clarkson. I think that kid can be really, really good for the Lakers. He wants to be there. And it seems like a bargain by today's right, NBA contract. Six years, contracts. 50 million dollars. That is a bargain based on. He, so they're not totally devoid of pieces. We're not talking about a team that's at ground zero. 
but it seems that their mentality is because they're, they're living in the past, man. They think it's the 60s, man, that Woodstock's going to be here all over again, man, and Carl Santana's <laughs> going to come out and play guitar, man, at a certain point. I'll take point. the 80s. I'll, I'll take the 90s if I'm a Lakers fan right now, seriously, because to Anita's point, your fan base deserves better than what they've gotten the way the Lakers have been run. And believe me, when Kobe got that contract, I understood it. I understood it. it was a lifetime appreciation contract, $24 million plus for the last couple of years, and Kobe gave one of the greatest endings, greatest closings to a Hall of Fame career that we've ever seen. But that's been the best thing about the Lakers for a team that has not even won 45 games the last two By the years. way, could you imagine if Kobe was still on the team and he sees Timothy Mozgov? This, 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 this deal would not have happened. Kobe this, would, Kobe this, would that, mentally this abuse would not Mozgov every day in practice. Yeah, well, then, that <laughs> you think this deal would have happened if Kobe was still on this, no, this squad? No, no way. No. Uh, an, another point, and, and again, going back to Sports Talk Radio, Freddie, I know you have a show as well, and, and it's the talk of legacy. It seems like big-time free agents, big players today, and we'll call them millennials. I think that's fair. Uh, the legacy factor doesn't, there's no value in it. Right. You know, I mean, do you think Michael Strahan would be on Good Morning America if he didn't win a, a, a Super Bowl with the New York football giants? No. Heck to the no, he would not. There is, you know, there is something about the legacy of winning in New York City. There is something well, about Tiki the didn't legacy. Tiki on NBC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Not for long. Didn't end well. <laughs> didn't have a Super Bowl. <laughs> right. did, did you have to go home? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Eli's somewhere rolling his eyes going home. Good thing you're not in the Giants locker room. Like Eli's so, right now saying, I so, got two championship rings plugging my ears when it comes to that conversation. You know, and, and, and same with same with L.A. And, and it just doesn't, I I have, and, and maybe because I'm an old timer, like I, like I have value in that. I think there's value in legacy, but but these players, it, it doesn't seem, it's, it's, it, it's. Well, you know, it's, because they've seen LeBron in Cleveland. They've seen Kevin Durant in Oklahoma City. They've seen guys become stars, even in the NFL. They've seen Cam Newton with the Carolina Panthers, Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. They've seen guys become stars that are not in big market places. The blueprint has, you can go to L.A. and go to New York anytime you want. That doesn't mean that your star has to rise or shine based on playing in those cities. And until that stops in Los Angeles, where you have to make it an attractive place where a free agent can look at the Lakers and say, yeah, I want to be a part of that. I want to be the start of something like that. They look at the Lakers and they go, <laughs> good luck with that. I'll go to the Clippers before I go to the Lakers. In today's social media, you can become a star from anywhere on the yeah. planet, basically. You can get endorsement deals from anywhere on the planet. And to me, I think the one commonality between the Lakers and Knicks is you got to look at ownership now and see it starts from the top. And if you are consistent, you have continuity, you have a plan, you have a good general manager in place. And Mitch Kupchak is a good general manager. Yes, he is. He's a good general manager. But you got to wonder what's going on above him and basically, are they going about things the right way? Well, that's a perfect transition. Let's talk about...